In this video, we're going to take a look at how easy it is to make adjustments to your Rococo mocap in Maya. We will record some mocap, then export it out to Maya, retarget it to our character, and finally fix some clipping issues and adjust some bones. The great thing about this workflow is you can do all this without destroying the original mocap, and it's surprisingly easy to do. Let's jump into it. So the first thing we'll need to do is record some Rococo mocap. Here I recorded two clips in Rococo Studio using the smart suit and smart gloves. If you need help setting up this hardware and recording mocap, as well as how to use our filters to clean up your mocap in Studio, you can check out our other tutorials on the channel and I'll put a link in the description below. In this first clip, I'm jumping around and doing some kicks. And in the second, I've recorded this face scratching, but for whatever reason, maybe magnetic interference, maybe a bad calibration, in this recording, my hand isn't actually scratching my face. Now, I could go back and re-record this motion so that my hand is closer to my face, but it's actually really easy to make this adjustment in Maya, so we're just gonna do that instead. After I'm done with my recording, I will export both clips as FBXs, I'll use the Maya IK skeleton for both and I'll export at 30 FPS. I always recommend the Maya IK skeleton regardless of what 3D program you're in. Okay, mocap is exported, now let's hop into Maya. So I'm working in Maya 2022, but this workflow is essentially the same in every version of Maya back to 2018. So let's start with the face scratching animation for which I'm going to use the standard Daz 3D male Genesis 8 model. You can get this model for free just by downloading Daz Studio. And the first thing I'm going to do is import the model. Then I will pose the model into a T-pose. And I'll also make sure to pose the thumbs laying flat alongside the fingers. This will help us get a better looking result from the finger and thumb animation. Next, I need to characterize the character as it's called, which is essentially opening up the Maya Human IK panel and then defining which bones are which on this bipedal guide. This allows Maya to properly retarget our mocap. So I'm gonna time lapse through this process, but we actually have a full tutorial on this that I'll put in the description below. One thing to note is that for Daz characters and characters in general, you always want to avoid using the twist bones if they have them. Instead, only use the bend bones. Once I'm done with this characterization, I can create a preset for this skeleton so I won't actually ever have to do this process again. Now we'll actually import our mocap from Rococo Studio. So again, I'm going to start with the face scratching animation, but the nice thing about this is that Maya already has a built-in preset for this skeleton that we exported out of Rococo Studio, namely the Maya Human IK skeleton. So I'm going to clear this character field in the Maya I Human IK panel, then I'll hit Create Character Definition, then I'm going to select our mocap skeleton's hips, which is what you always have to do when you're doing this process and loading in a preset. And then I will go to this folder icon, which is load, and I'll select the HIK or human IK preset. And boom, as soon as you do that, you can see that we have a green check mark. So now I'm going to add our characters, our Daz character skeleton back into the top character field. And I'm going to add our mocap to the source field and if I hit play, we have our mocap on our character. Especially after you add the presets, this process is really easy and retargeting in Maya is what I always recommend as the absolute best way to retarget your mocap. Even if you're working in another program, it's good to do your retargeting in Maya if you want the absolute best results. Something about their retargeting algorithm is just really fantastic. Okay, so we've got our mocap on our character, but how do we actually make adjustments to this animation, right? So the first thing that we'll do is bake the animation to our character's skeleton, because right now it's just referencing the mocap. So I'll go to this blue square, then I'll go to bake, and then go to bake to skeleton. This will actually bake our keyframes to our character, and after this is done, I can just delete our mocap from the scene because we don't need it anymore. Next, we'll take a look at what bones we'll need to adjust. Fortunately for this scene, it looks like we just need to adjust this right forearm bone. In order to add our tweak or our edit, 
I'm going to go and select that bone. In this case, it's called R forearm bend. Next, we will go to the layer editor. I'll select the Anim tab. And then while my forearm bone is selected, that's key, I'll hit this button with a little plane and circle. This will create an animation layer for the selected objects. Once I hit it, you can see that the keyframes disappear from our timeline for that bone. And that's because we now have a new animation layer on top of our original mocap animation. This allows us to add keyframes to our animation without destroying the original mocap. So the process I, I usually use to actually make the edit is to first go and find the beginning of where we want the edit and the end and key both of those frames. This means that no matter what keyframes we add between these, at the end of the tweak that we make and before the tweak that we make, we will just have the original mocap. I add keyframes using the S hotkey. So now that we have the first and last frames keyed of our animation, I'm going to go to where the hand should reach the face, right here. And I'm going to rotate that forearm bone so that the finger is scratching the face. and then I'll add another keyframe. Then I'll copy this keyframe and paste it at the point where the finger should be leaving the face. And there we go, if we play this back, you can see that maybe I need to make another adjustment to the second keyframe, and I can do that and just hit S again right on top of that keyframe. And you can continue fine tuning this as needed, but this is essentially the workflow for making these tweaks. I can always add more bones by selecting them and adding new layers in the Anim Layer Manager. And as you can see, it's surprisingly easy to do this. Let's take a peek at another example. So here I have this robot model with that second mocap animation. And as is often the case when you have models with non-human proportions, we are getting some clipping. This robot's arms are much longer than the mocap's arms, so you can see that it's moving back and through, th through the robot's uh, angle here. I've already baked my animation to my robot skeleton, so I'm just gonna go and select the left arm bone and I'm going to add it to a new animation layer. Then I'm going to add my first and last keyframes. And then between them in the middle here, I'm going to rotate the arm so it doesn't intersect with the leg. Maybe I'll play it through and make sure that it's not going to intersect with the leg again. So I'll make another adjustment. And then if we play it back, here we go. We have a surprisingly easy way to clean up your mocap in Maya. Now I can export this animation out to another program, in this case Cinema 4D, do a little render, and that's the workflow. So we know Maya can be intimidating, and if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. We hope this video was helpful, and thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.